Um, so I live um, in Ben Avon. Uh, literally, Shenango Cokeworks is right in my backyard. I look at it all the time. Um, have you found any correlation between um, weather and the amount of smells? Because I don't know if I don't know if it's that on rainy, kind of really heavy cloud-covered days. Um, that maybe those odors aren't escaping as quickly and they're more trapped, but they're definitely more pronounced and distinct. Or I don't know if Shenango Coke Works is actually just releasing more pollutants into the air at that time. But it's definitely a pattern that we've just noticed living in the community over the years, that it's, it's, it's has a distinct smell anyway, but certainly on those kind of cloudy, overcast rainy days, it's definitely worse. Hi, Francis Harps from Ben Avon Heights. Um, you, I have two comments. One is that um, for many, a long period of time, I would call the health department when I experienced smells. And I sent emails to friends saying, if you're smelling a call now, I stopped because my understanding was that there was 24 hour um, monitoring. So to, to showing data um, to, to, um, about the number of people who called, I suggest is not a really good metric um, to track. Uh, second thing is around your point, is that you're showing us a lot of data. And I know you live in data, and you show us charts over a period of time. Um, it's what happens, I think, when you show lots of data like that is people are looking at it, trying to make sense of it, and you get lost into some kind of conversation about the data, when what we really need are exception reports. That is the kind of information that is actionable and then helps to articulate what the issue is. So I, I would caution us from trying to get too deep into your data because you live it, you breathe it, that's what your job is. But the rest of us, we're not equipped. But what we do need to know is coming out of that data, where are the exceptions summarized in a way that is communicates to us and that's actionable? Um, last spring, uh, Joe Angelelli, I live in Kilbuck Township. Um, last spring, I, I attended the Avalon meeting uh, and appreciate you coming out to, to converse with folks there. Um, during that time, there was blue smoke coming out of the stack for about two weeks straight, um, and I raised that to you, and I think somebody there said, well, I think they're working on some sort of screener, and they had to take it offline or something like that. I'm presuming they were in violation during that time, and they were being cited. What, my question is, were they required to slow production during this time? Because it's very clear that they're polluting, and we know that we can slow the coking process down considerably to at least pollute less during that time. Is there any mechanism legally to sort of make them actually slow their production during that time? Right now, that was part of a consent decree, actually. That was part of the federal consent decree. They have an allowance. There's an annual, and then I guess it's an annual repair to, this, to the battery itself. And that was part of that outage. That's where that originated from. So yes, we were aware of that occurring. As to forcing on the longer coking time per the consent or decree there, no. The consent decree coking time could be changed based off the 2014 consent order. And that so would be based off pushing compliance. I, not I guess staff. my point is it's, that's, that's legalese at some point. We know, you, you actually know they're polluting. I'm looking at blue smoke every night I come home and it's going into this valley and we're all breathing it. And we know that they're polluting and there's no mechanism to say slow down your production process and lose some money on this because you're impacting our public health. That's, that's problematic. My other question is, where, where is the health systems in this question, equation? I mean, I'm a health services researcher. This is our public health. These are our, all these asthma things. This costs us money. Where are, where are they together on this to figure out how we track this better? Just be better epidemiologists around the whole question so we have data. I should have an app. I should know when they're in violation. It shouldn't be that hard. I mean, right? Somebody's out there saying 36 times a day, we know they're, I want to know. That's all. And when we know that, we see it, put it on a billboard, and then maybe somebody will do something about it. That's all. The you people are more than happy to allow Shenango to throw crap into our air and kill our families, and the county does nothing but raise our taxes, put up a bullcrap moniker that we're one of the most livable cities, when all you're doing is killing us. It seems like you haven't distanced yourself from the old steel mill days. You've just hired a better PR firm 
to paste it over and do nothing. So what are you doing? They're in violation every friggin' day. What are you doing? All the violations are enforced. So that's, that's one thing that you don't really want to hear, but it is true, they are all enforced. What, it, what are you doing? What's the legitimate answer? What are you doing? Do we have to make a national circus out of Allegheny County and stop people from moving here to actually get some action? Because I think that's the only way you guys are gonna do anything. Because you don't give a damn that kids are with asthma, that we have the highest asthma rates in the state. You don't give a crap. You throw our complaints into the circular file on a daily basis because half of them don't get recorded. What are you going to do about this? If this was a restaurant, you'd have it closed down in a week because it was a public health problem. Where the hell is the revoking of their operating permit? Uh, from what I've read and understood, every time they have a violation, they pay the fine rather than making an adjustment for better air quality. Is that accurate? No, no, no. I mean, every single time they violate, they're fined, they pay it, they continue to pollute, they pay the fine. It's a vicious cycle. And the result, to the lady who just spoke, the action is they pay money to pollute more. Data for autistic spectrum related disorders. There's been a uh, study out released by University of Pittsburgh and Harvard that suggests air pollutants uh, uh, impact mm -hmm. those numbers. Yes, I actually am very, um, <laughs> very familiar with that study. Um, I worked with Pitt on that study, actually. So um, as far as the health department looking into that, not that I know of, are we planning on doing that? Um, I just wanted to point out that we're here because we really do care about the quality of our air and not just all the adults that are in the room, yeah. but um, also the young people, and I believe that me and Sarah are representing them here. Um, my uncle actually died of lung cancer back in 2010, um, and he never smoked a pack a day. Right. Um, and so I believe that might have a correlation with the Shenango. But, um, I want to know what the Allegheny County Health Department will do, like, because I see a lot of research, but I, I just right. don't understand what action is being taken, and because our club motto is just to do something, not we don't wait around to right. see the negative health effects on the community, and I would just like to see that. For some reason. I understand that diet and tobacco are large contributions to lung cancer, but those are choices and the air that we breathe in right. isn't a choice for us. Right, that is, def that is very true. And like I pointed out when I showed that, air pollution is the only one on that list, or pollution, that was all pollution together, is the only one on that list that is not controlled by the individual, which, is, which makes it very frustrating, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's, that's why we're all here too. Are you with the same club? Yeah. Yes. Ken Holmes, I live in Bellevue. You know, I'm looking at the studies you're currently doing, mm -hmm. but studies have been done which give us the evidence and the facts that we're looking at today. You know, with the cancer rates in this area, Northgate School District asthma rates. Those are fact, Though that's evidence that something is seriously wrong. Now, I'm wondering what your, what are your studies, your current studies out to prove. Has it not been proven that, um, that this area is a dangerous area? I, is that not established fact or is that still up in the air? I, I don't feel like all the facts are in. Um, well, I don't think one study health, proves anything. Given the anything, health statistics the kind of in this are. area in Allegheny County in North Boroughs, is that, is that just fantasy? No, I'm not saying that it is, but okay, I don't think Okay, I'm wondering what threshold do you need to hit? At that time, you say, a known pollutant is, is out there operating every day, never asked to cut back, never asked to stop. At what point do you say enough? Right. And I... <clears throat> And I'd like to address a comment that Jim Thompson made earlier. 
You said it's not pay to play. What else do we call this? What else is it other than the cost of doing business? Tell, can you tell me now? Okay, uh, just a comment. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows that uh, Shenango operates under a Title V permit which says their smell cannot leave beyond their fence line. So they're violating this every day. Um, why, and you know, Dean has admitted smelling, you smell it, why is their Title V permit not pulled? Well, I, I, you know, I'm trying to understand the philosophy of what you're doing because um, you're studying the health effects due to Shenango, but we keep hearing that the air is getting better, so aren't your data just going to be a lagging indicator and not really indicative of, uh, of going... With cancer, def definitely, and that is, that is hard yeah. So um, won't they do. just won't they just dismiss your data as being, you know, a thing of the past, and they, and they could just say the air is getting better, your, your data is irrelevant. And well, I, I hope not. But, um, um, but one, that's one of the reasons. I'm not just looking at cancer. That is a problem And with heart cancer. disease, too, is a lagging indicator right. because you're but, accumulating but the, this part of birth outcomes are not. Okay, that m one may not be. But couldn't you use the uh, known relationship between, for example, PM25? Every microgram per meter cubed in increases risk for heart disease and cancer by a few percent, and that's known. Studies have shown that. So why can't we just estimate the amount of micrograms per meter cube put out by Shenango, and, and, and therefore we can estimate the number of deaths that are being caused in our 70,000 or so people that are exposed to it. As, um, you can look this stuff up on Wikipedia. Every, every, uh, every microgram per meter of PM2.5 increases your risk of, I think it's uh, lung cancer, by 3.6%. Just figure out how much of that stuff is coming from Shenango, and you have an answer right there. It's, it's obviously going to be causing cancer. And, 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 it's, and, it, and it's a preventable thing, because who needs this plant? I mean, we all have to drive cars, and we all have to drive trucks, but nobody needs this plant. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Bartlett. I, uh, I'm a resident of Bellevue. And, uh, you know, first of all, it's, it's amazing to me to come out. Like, I know this is something that has meant something to me. I have a 10-year-old son. And to come out and see a room full of, like, 150 people, this is huge. And I just I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, yes. And, and, I, and, and definitely the people, probably the people in the blue shirts are, like, my heroes right now. Um, but earlier you said, uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, that the, the power of the grassroots, you, you kind of alluded that there might be something that the grassroots can do um, that can kick it up a notch. Um, somehow the, the health of, uh, department apparently, you know, we've been, everyone's been saying we've been riding the treadmill, uh, da, da, you know, they're paying to play and it's just another fine and just another day. And, you know, so what is it that, um, or, you know, what are, you know, what, we have a room full of people that if we focused our energy on getting something done and, you know, something, you know, making silly phone calls in the middle of the night to a plant is just not, that to me is not really something that's going to make a difference. Um, you know, it, it'll add another, you know, data point to your data set, which is great, but like, what, what, what can we really do? We got a lot of power in this room and we can build more and you, are you, you know, you're saying it's possible. So what is it? Help us see a vision for what we can do. 